Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. How you doing, John? Good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. I really, uh, I really know what's going on, but John, what could be... <laughs> What's really interesting for today uh, that you think uh, our audience might enjoy? Well, I think sex. Uh, everybody would enjoy it. Well, I'm sorry. I got carried away. No, no, no. It's dating. Now, Art, this isn't for you and me. You shouldn't be dating. You've been married for I, over 50 years. I, but... I, I, date, I date my wife as you date yours. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So, But there's a lot of people over 50 that are single divorced or widowed or whatever it is they are single and a lot of them are looking looking for love and so in all the right places right in all the right places and to help us find those right places is our love and relationship coach michelle fabrega i wonder if she's there (laughs) oh michelle oh michelle oh hello (laughs) hi oh as if you haven't been sitting there listening to this whole thing really Hello, good to be it's, here. It's good to see you dating in the, uh, it, not only dating over 50, you know, dating as a senior uh, is difficult enough, uh, right? Because a lot of people have been out of the dating market for many years. But we've now got a pandemic. Uh, you got to wear face masks. There's no kissing goodnight with a face mask that I can see. Um, <laughs> you know, wh- how, do you, how do you navigate the world of romance if you're a single senior uh, during the pandemic. I mean, it's really, nobody has six foot long arms. So how do you <laughs> remain socially distant with a face mask in your pandemic world? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like it, you know, can be a challenging time for um, if you're single and you don't want to be, you can feel you know, isolated, feel lonely, and you really want to meet someone. And so it is totally possible to be dating right now. It just maybe a little tweaks in your um, in your protocol around how you do that. So yeah, I'd be happy to talk more about that. I think it's really it can be a great time, and um, yeah, why not? You know, bring some love into your life. Um, so obviously, you know, one of the first things is you're gonna probably be needing to meet people online first, and there are lots of ways to do that. It can be either through an online dating site, or there are different communities online you can find things you're interested in. Uh, meetup.com has local events that are most likely online these days. You can find things you're interested in that way. And another great resource is uh, there's a community called stitch.net, which is just for people in their 50s and up. Hmm. And it's not, I, I don't get any kind of like uh, uh, whatever, it's, I don't have an affiliate link for them, but basically it's a community of people uh, 50 and up. They also have a dating site there, but it's also just people looking for companionship. It's a non non not for profit charity in Australia, based in Australia, but it's worldwide. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm a member there, and uh, there are a lot of people who are looking to connect and, and find companionship. So that's a great way to meet people. Because I think it can be easier sometimes when the stakes are not as high as like online dating, and you're kind of assessing each other, you know, right off the right off the get go without really knowing much about each other. Yeah. So that's a great. Well, you, you mentioned online um, dating, and of course, online dating has been popular for a number of years now. And there's a lot of precautions that go along with that. People recommend that you, you know, find a way to check out who you're talking to. Are they really who they say they are? So I guess not only knowing that you're going through a reputable site, but there's what do you call it? Uh, you got to check out the people you're talking to. You got to do some research on them. Do you not? Yeah, I, I definitely. I think it, you, you need to be prudent there. And, and and I don't think, you know, I don't know about different dating sites, but a lot of them don't always vet you for who you are. Um, I do happen to know that Stitch requires to see like a driver's license. So you are who you say you are type thing. But, you know, what does that really, you still, you know, let the buyer beware, right? You need to be cautious around that sure. for sure. And, and And actually that brings me to the other point is that, you know, this is a time perhaps to come out to your friends, family, call, work colleagues, uh, professional colleagues that, hey, you know what? I'm looking to date. I'm looking to meet someone. Do you know anybody? And it might seem a little embarrassing at first to do that because usually you think, oh, you want to keep you know that separate and private. But, you know, it's such a great way to meet someone. You kind of, you can maybe have, you know, a little more comfort and you, know, you can trust them a little, you know, more easily. And um, 
Yeah. Your friends know you, right? People have known you for a long time, know you, and maybe they know somebody who's also newly single and um, wants to meet. So I think that's a great way, so, actually. So if, if, let's say you're in a more traditional sense, you're going to physically meet somebody. They're in your, your, within your seven and a half mile zone or whatever it is that uh, you're willing to go meet somebody. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you need to say, uh, uh, show me your test, your, uh, your COVID <laughs> test, and I'll show you my COVID test? How does that all work? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, so I work with people like this. Um, and basically, it's, you know, first you'd want to connect over video or phone or whatever is right. And so you take some time during that process, however long you decide over the course of a few calls or whatever. And then once you do decide to meet, you might want to meet in a physically distanced way, meet outside at a park, meet at a restaurant where there's outdoor seating and, um, you know, have a social distancing kind of date. And, um, and, and what I really want to emphasize is that it's important to know and to trust basically their COVID or, you know, uh, pandemic, whatever protocol about how they're keeping safe or not, because you kind of want to be on the same page. If one person is going out a lot and meeting lots of people and uh, most, you know, we're, we're over 50. So hopefully I'm assuming a lot of people are pretty cautious, but you know, everybody is doing it differently. Right. And um, so if they're okay, so they're in touch with these people and they have family, but they're, you know, always wearing masks when they do these kinds of things. You know, you want to feel like you're kind of on the same page because obviously even if you get your COVID test and they're still, you know, working out at a gym or, you know, whatever, I'm just making something up there, but you want to be sure. kind of on the same page with that. So yeah. once you decide to proceed, then obviously, you know, get your COVID test, check that out. And then, and then you can get closer, right. And, um, see what it's like to hug and to kiss. And, and then obviously I really want to recommend people to be really, you know, responsible around their sexuality. So it's about talking about eventually, right. Your STI history and tests around that too, before you, become sexual. Okay, so so uh, dating during the pandemic, now that uh, we've got about 10 months into this, is uh, is something that's okay with the, according to uh, your experience, uh, with the appropriate uh, precautions? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and there's something, you know, if you don't, if, if the risk about it are not worth the reward, then maybe it's not the right thing for you right now. It, you know, it's a totally individual decision, right? So some people are like, you know, I really want to meet someone. I want to be cuddling with someone. I want to be close with someone. So, you know, you, you might want to proceed if it's like, you know, it, it just depends, right? You know, it's interesting that uh, all the elements, the stages, the uh, steps that you just went through are really, in a way, they're pretty old fashioned. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> Long before internet, long before pandemics, uh, it's take your time, uh, you know, meet somebody. Don't be afraid to be introduced by people who you both know in common. That's right. That's about as traditional as you can get. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and and take it slow. Get to meet each other. Yeah. Uh, get to find out about each other. And then if you're going to be sexual, don't be, uh, you know, don't don't be irresponsible. Um, so, you know, those are pretty much the same rules. They're just, I guess you just apply the internet to them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And there's kind of an intermediate step with the COVID test before, you know, even sure. get a little closer. Sure. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been many years now that people have been asking for uh, sexual transmitted diseases tests as well, you know, right. hey, oh, I, want, yeah. I want to see if you've got AIDS, you know, so uh, that, uh, it really is good advice and uh, shouldn't be taken lightly. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the only thing that's different maybe is that because, you know, it, it takes some time. I mean, people are busy, most likely. And so, you know, you might actually be dating multiple people at once, perhaps you might choose to do that. And so you might have some, you know, you're meeting some people on Zoom and then maybe one person you're meeting physical distance like, oh, you know, it doesn't really work. And so, you know, and, but to really be open and honest about, you know, what you are doing so that people yeah. can make um, the right decision for themselves. Oh, you're already uh, dating someone and you've already been getting together with them. It's like, well, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with it, you know, or that's fine. Thanks for letting me know. Right. And I still want to continue to get to know you. You know, it's really, I'm really, a voice for you know ethical 
dating and honesty and, um, you know, being transparent about what you're doing, what you're looking for, even too. you're looking for companionship, you're looking for long term partner, you're looking yeah. for um, there are many, you know, I just want to yeah, be close with some other people. I don't know what that looks like yet. You know, there, there are different ways to to approach dating. Sure. And I, I think, but I'm not sure, I think it should get easier because we're over 50, we're older, we're mature adults. And we've been through this, you know, or, at least or, once or, before. Or immature adults. Or immature. <laughs> well, I'm, listen, I'm sure when you're outdating, no matter how old you are, you feel immature. But, but <laughs> we've all been through this at least once, and it should be a little easier. At least it should give us the ability to uh, be more honest about it, about our feelings and our desires with okay. each other. So, yeah. So the takeaway for our audience is that uh, if you want to start dating – then there are ways you can do it even with a pandemic going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And my, well, my final reminder is just, you know, to not take it too seriously. Like just enjoy the process. It's, it's a getting to know each other. It can be fun. It can be playful. You can flirt and, you know, see what, who you're drawn to and who you're not drawn to. And it, it's all okay. And to be kind if you're a no for someone too. Yeah. Good advice. Okay. Well, I think this was a, uh a good place to end the episode and get out there and uh, go get your COVID test and meet somebody. Michelle, thank you very much. Yeah, great to be here. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.